thought I'd do a quick video of the Harbor Freight solar panel system that I have wired into my house. As you can see, I've actually got it wired up out here to my sh in my shed. I didn't want to put it on the roof of my house because the pitch of the house is extremely steep. And I didn't want to have to worry about leaking as the years went by. So I thought, well, how can I do that and still get power into my house? And so I watched a few videos on YouTube and I came up with this idea. And I actually mounted the panels out here on top of my shed. And I've got my whole system out here that I run the power to my house. And hold on a second, I'll get a step ladder and I'll show you the panels and then I'll show you the system and how I've got it set up. Here's the panels mounted to the top of my side shed. And as you can see, I just used three pressure treated 2 by 4s and I painted them white and then I screwed them down and then I mounted the panels to them. And after that, I just run it through PVC pipe to protect the wires from storms and the weather and sun and just aging from the elements. Here we are in the shed looking at the system. This is actually two Harbor Freight systems that I bought so that I could have the extra panel and the extra charge controller. And then I bought the batteries from Harbor Freight. There are only 35 amperes, but they are true solar batteries for discharging and recharging, you know. And I thought maybe that would be a better way to go. The panels come in from the wire and then they come down through a hole right here in the side of the cabinet. I built this cabinet just out of scrap plywood. And they come into the box, the combiner box. They go from there, then it goes down to the inline fuse, and then from the fuse it goes to the charge controller. And as you can see right now, we're getting 13.6. And these panels are not pointed true south. But my building wasn't facing that way, so I just done it, you know, the way my building was facing. And that's fine because I knew I was going to add an extra panel to it. And these charge controllers can actually handle up to 4 amps, so I knew I'd be okay. Now when I get another one, I'll need to, to get a better charge controller. Then it goes from there and it goes to the batteries. And from the batteries, it goes back to the inverter. Now, the thing about it is, this is out here in my shop. I need the power in my house, but I didn't want all this in my house. So what I done was, I run these underground wires for running lights or anything, and I buried them. Then I run two speaker wires. One of them is heavy gauge that we had left over when we built the house and the other is thin gauge. Now the heavy gauge one comes into the charge controller and I soldered it into the switch right here. And it goes all the way to the house then and it, I wall fished it into the wall and it goes to a light switch. So I can actually flip the light switch on in the house and this charge controller comes on out here. Now that worked great and we loved it. But the problem was at night I needed to know how much power we had left in the batteries. So I bought one of those digital battery monitors and I kept trying to figure out how to run it to the house. So I thought, okay, I'm going to use speaker wire again, but I was afraid it would make too much of a drain on my battery. All the heavy gauge wire and run into the house. So I used a real thin gauge speaker wire and I run it to the house and it works great. I had to make a box of my own, you know, to figure out how that we could turn it on and monitor what was going on. But also with this, I left my cord long enough. This is only a thousand watt inverter. But I left my cord long enough like during power storms and thunderstorms, power outages, stuff like that, I can actually unplug these and I can plug them in to my um, generator. I've got a large one and I've got a small one. And three years ago here in the south we had major storms and we had major power outages that lasted like seven, eight, even nine days or more. And we started running out of clothes. So I fixed this where that I have enough space extra on here. I can unplug it from this, crank up the generator and just pull it over here and plug it straight into the generator. Because one is to the living room 
This one's to the living room, and this one is to the kitchen. It's upside down, but still, it's to the kitchen. And I've actually got lights and plug-ins that these are wired into in the living room and the kitchen so that, you know, I can use off the battery or I can use off generator or a combination of both. Depends on what I'm doing and what I need. But this is just a little cheap box I built. But I'll show you how I run it from here to the house. And then I'll take you in the house and show you the rest of the system. Okay, the air is running, so I won't get too close to that because you won't be able to hear. But actually, I run the wires underground from the side shed just with one of those little spades that you use. And I run it all the way to right here to where our inlet is for our other stuff for our power for our house. Then when I got there, I run it up, run it over, and run it through that same hole. Both of those wires plus both speaker wires. So there's actually four wires together running through there. Underground and then through that. That's just white PVC pipe that I got and I spray painted it silver so that it would look better. It was just cheaper. That's the best way to do it. I'm not worrying about code. This is my code. This works for me. This works for my family. And I was just wanting to play with this system and see what I could get it to do. Or really, even if I could get it to work. I actually drilled a small hole and I run the wire that I use for the kitchen outlets up through this conduit pipe and into the attic. Once in the attic, then it runs over and it runs down and I wall fished it through the wall to the plug-in and to the switch. But that's how I access the attic. And of course the other one, the one going to the living room, I just come up under the floor with it. So it wasn't really a big deal. But all of that is contained right there going to that. So it really doesn't show. Now the speaker wires, when they come up through that little hole, they come over here behind the door. I think you can see the brackets where I've got them running. And both speaker wires run around the side of the door here in the utility room. And they go down to what... I guess you would call, I don't know, control central, I don't know how you control it. Anyway, <coughs> it's simple, I had to make it simple and keep it simple so that my wife and kids could use it too. And plus, I wanted it simple, you know? Okay, so the heavy gauge wire that goes to my inverter, it's the heavy gauge speaker wire. It comes down and it goes to this light switch. So all we have to do, flip that on. Now the inverter out in the shop is on. And then right here I made this myself I wanted to wait so that I could monitor what was going on inside the house how much battery juice I needed but since I'm not an electrician I don't know that much about it I needed to keep it simple so what I done is I ordered this digital battery meter off of eBay or Amazon one for two or three dollars I went to Home Depot and I got this little half box I didn't even know they had half boxes till I seen this so that that way I didn't have to cut another hole into my wall and put one of the flip out boxes and all that. But anyway, I just ordered that and I got that at Home Depot and I got a plain solid face plate. And then I went to Radio Shack and I got me a little on and off flip switch button. So all we have to do is turn it on and then we can see how much juice is in the batteries and how much is the panels are producing so that we can use more power even at night or during the daytime and still keep an eye on our batteries and this has really worked great i really enjoyed having this anytime we're using power and i'm in question about how much power we've got how much we've used i just come in here flip that on seriously there's nothing to it two wires connected to the two speaker wires for that and then this has two on one side and two on the other and then you're good to go because two of them will go to, you know, it, it's just easy. I mean, it's almost self-explanatory with this. Made the world of difference. And then, like I said, inverter's off. Inverter's out. It's that simple. Now, I'll take you into the kitchen. Okay, here we are in the kitchen. And that is the solar light. It's a regular standard house light that uses two bulbs. I did not want anything to stand out or anything to look odd. I did not want the Harbor Freight lights hanging in my house. I do have the commercial lights on so that we will have plenty of power and you can see how much this puts out and then I'll show you the other. But I wanted plenty of lighting so that you could see what was going on in here. 
but these are commercial lights and so when you come over to the power switch you've got commercial right here and then you've got solar right here and now watch this that's solar and see how bright that is yes it's daytime but what a, now let me turn off the commercial and now these as these warm up they'll even get brighter there are those swirl ice cream type lights you know but there look around at the light that this is giving off and now this is strictly off of solar and as you can see there is light coming in from that little one window but we're having rainstorms today so it's not really that much light it's not like the sunshine's coming in this is solar light right here it gives us plenty of light at night we use this every night in the kitchen and in the living room and we use the plug-in sometimes depending on what we need and see now you can kind of tell it's had time to warm up so it's getting a little bit brighter so I will turn the solar back off and the commercial back on and let you see the difference there's not as much difference as you would think that it's, it's awesome we actually do use this system every night one thing my wife said I don't want to sit around in the dark it's got to put out enough light to where I can use it and that's just a standard low fixture that we bought but like I said I wall fished it over to this plug in right here that's where my lead in and my hot is and then that way she's got a plug for cooking here in the kitchen if she needs a plug this is also goes down the hallway to our bedrooms and bathrooms so if we've got a power outage we can run a drop cord down there to the bedroom and bathroom but then I took my hot back up and over and I had to drill a hole and I wall fished it down and put the other switch right next to the regular one so as long as solar is on and we flip it as you can see I'll turn this off see the difference watch uh, and we use it every single night and it's that simple now I'll take you in the living room and show you the living room and so when I started trying to put in solar lights I kept wondering what I was going to do and I even thought about maybe mounting one on the wall but my wife she didn't like that idea at all she just did not like that idea but we kept watching videos and so we came up with an idea about how to do it so what I done was I ran my wire for the living room and I wall fished it through the wall from under the floor the second one you know we got the two plugs out there and I wall fished it up to this one and then I jumped it off of this plug in over to one over here behind the couch now that way we've got a plug in on both sides and if the power goes out we just unplug from the commercial plug in and then we plug it in to the solar plug in and we still have TV and that's great when you got kids let me tell you we went through like seven days during the tornado uh, three years ago with no power and the kids went they was bouncing off the walls that's all I can say about that and then from that plug we just hooked it to a lamp now we wanted something like I said easy to use so we had seen on survivalist 2012's video was where I really got this idea and hooked it to a remote control and so all you do is just use the remote to turn it on and turn it on well the sun's come out now it's trying to come out but turn it on and turn it off and when we first set the system up and we first got the lamp and we were using it we actually got one of the expensive um, LED bulbs that was twenty dollars and it put out the, uh, the equivalent to a hundred watt light well let me tell you it was too much sitting here on the couch in the love seat trying to watch TV even my wife was having to hide her eyes she's like it's too bright she's too bright I'm like yeah but you wasn't wanting to sit around in the dark now was you but anyway we took it back we got a 75 watt bulb we swapped it for a seven that was too bright still had to take it back and get a 65 watt bulb now that's equivalent to a 65 watt it actually only uses 12 or 14 watts of power I don't remember 
It was one of those that we got at Home Depot that's cool to the touch. You know, it's not the ice cream one, it's the other. It's the LED ones. And they're pretty expensive. They're about 20 bucks, but they really get the job done because they put off power. Even at night, the whole living room is lit up fine. And the light even shines from the living room into the dining room and then from the kitchen into the dining room so our whole dining room is even lit up at night so we actually light three rooms every night off of solar and we have the plug-ins if we want to use them now a lot of people they'll harp on harbor freight systems but I'm gonna tell you I wanted to stay under five hundred dollars to get this system in I wanted something simple for me, because I'm not an electrician, and I wanted something simple for my family to use. We have been using this system every night for about probably five months now, and we have noticed a slight reduction in our power bill. Not major, because we're just using it mainly for lights, but we also have the security of knowing if the power goes out, we've got lights. We can have TV. We can plug up our coffee grinder and have fresh ground coffee, you know, with the press because we have gas burners. It's, it's, it's awesome. And it's not anything that you're going to be able to run your whole house off of, but it is something great to have as a backup in case of an emergency or in case of natural disasters like we had three years ago. And like I said, you can do it for less, easily less than $400. And I did buy the extras kit, but I got the coupon off of eBay, you know, so I only got it for like 139 a piece. But anyway, it's the Harbor Freight solar panel system. It's wired into my house. We use it every night. We have had no problems. And no, it's not up to regular standard wiring codes, but it's up to my code. And it's what works for me and my family. And maybe this will give you some ideas because this is where I got the ideas from. I didn't want something that was going to be sticking out and showing and I just wanted something that was going to blend right in where we would have it in case we needed it and we do and so I thank everybody on YouTube that has posted videos and that's why I posted this video I wanted people to see that you can wire one into your house and actually use it without messing your house up or without making it look junky too see you later